here we have Matt, who's kindly um, volunteered to to uh, interview for uh, his previous um, participation in rowing. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Uh, just a quick question Sorry. to kick us off. Um, so we, we know that you previously took part in rowing. Um, was this a result of previous experiences in the sport prior to university? Uh, was it something that was enforced when you came to university by the coach? Um, it was something that I I was aware of at school, but yeah. I never really got a chance to do it yeah. to a high level. And then as soon as the opportunity became available to really yeah. compete with really well yeah. top athletes, yeah. um, I suddenly decided it was probably a good thing to do. So, so yeah, so from that, was there a motivation to push yourself as far as much as possible to be one of those top athletes that you talk about to be the best. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah. I wanted to do as well as I possibly could. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, would you say that within the sport as an identity, it suggests, like we say then, it's for the rowing club at Durham, it's about being the best club, it's about being the most professional, the most elite club in, in Team Durham. Would you say there's an identity that comes with that? Yeah, definitely. I think it's all it's all about being the most um, committed and most yeah. dedicated. Yeah. And training as hard as you can and yeah. making the most of all your sessions and not having any waste of time really and just yeah. doing it as professional as possible. Yeah, because I mean, I, I mean, I, I know from a couple of other people as well that rowing's quite intense. You train quite a lot in a week. Yeah, exactly. I mean, how, how many sessions did you used to do? Uh, so it would be on a um, on an average week we probably have usually about during the week we'd have two sessions a day yeah. usually I would have Friday off yeah. um, and then on a Wednesday we'd have a big afternoon session yeah. down at um, Newcastle Yeah. Um, and then on a Saturday and Sunday we'd usually be at Newcastle all morning And so you only have one day off really yeah basically Friday was the only day off and sometimes we'd have uh, pretty intense yeah bits on on Friday as well so it's, makes other clubs look pretty uh, amateur yeah yeah no, it's, it's quite yeah, it's quite intense um, I mean in, in your personal opinion um is this healthy for an individuals of our age or for our, in our situation coming to university with regards to academic life as well? Would you say it's healthy or um, I think too much? Or? I think it is a lot, it's a lot to deal with and I think some people, I think it was a really interesting mix between some people that obviously could deal with the academic yeah. work and I think people who had done it at school and yeah. um, you know, being very good at rowing at school had a, a massive advantage yeah, yeah. because they knew how to yeah. Um, how to deal with it but I think it definitely was quite a big shock yeah. suddenly I mean the, the one of the worst things was just the fact that you had to deal with the fact that you were constantly tired yeah. so you were always trying to yeah. um, sort of uh, yeah just working when you're tired it's yeah, not really yeah. something that's yeah, naturally yeah. You but do, do, but yeah exactly but do you, do you develop an ignorance towards that you know do you develop an attitude where you just completely ignore the fact you're tired and you just you still do it you still go to every session you still put 100% in yeah yeah, yeah I, I think it's a lot easier to do that with the the rowing side of things yeah. you can always sort of pushing yourself physically is not yeah. well obviously it, it takes a lot of commitment but it's not you can do it whereas when you're sitting in a lecture it's yeah, quite yeah. hard to stay away oh, yeah, yeah. and you, yeah. you often sort of like prioritise yeah. you definitely prioritise the rowing sessions over um, yeah. over academic work which definitely wasn't a good strategy but. yeah so, so obviously alongside the physical aspect of it, you know, being constantly tired, you know, yeah. uh, and also soreness and aching, I presume as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's obviously the mental side of it, you know, being able to deal oh, yeah. with it mentally with academics yeah. and stuff, you know. I think, yeah, the, the mental side was quite, I think it's a lot tougher than you think, yeah. um, because obviously the, the worst thing is when you're not doing well, especially with rowing, is that it was quite like a cyclical sport almost. It felt like you'd have yeah. weeks where you're doing really, really well and like yeah. you're getting PBs every single time you did yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. And there'd be other weeks where you just felt like you were underperforming the whole time. Yeah. And um, mentally it can be quite tough. But, but you still go back to it. You still go yeah, back like to it's, it's like, I mean, there are times when you want to give it up, but yeah. you don't because all your friends are doing it. Yeah. And a lot of the, the way, that a lot of the reasons for pushing yourself are because your friends are... Yeah. We'll go through exactly external, the same yeah, thing. Excellent you, influence, yeah, exactly. yeah, a social influence. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, would you say it's um, with that as well? Would you say that some people have just got it? You know, some people have just got that mentality. They can just go one hundred percent all the time. Um, and yeah, you know, and there are other people that simply just can't go that that intensity. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, some of the the more senior guys that have done a lot more rowing previously to university, yeah. they were a lot. Um, they were a lot better at dealing with that, yeah. or at least it seemed like they were. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's quite, it's always quite hard to know. Um, yeah, you only yeah. really understand what people are mentally going through with the yeah. people that you're closest to because yeah. you, they're the only people you really talk to that about. Yeah. But, um, Absolutely, yeah. But yeah, I, I think yeah, it was quite, there were definitely people that just couldn't cope and they dropped out pretty yeah. pretty quickly. I mean, yeah, so when we talk about people that, you know, that couldn't cope or, you know, felt it would be better if they didn't continue yeah. with it, do you think that is. Um, 
there, there's, I mean, from my, my point of view, there's two ways of potentially looking at it. You can look at it as overtraining, you know, or you can look at it as an actual addiction or an exercise addiction. People are addicted to performing, addicted to turning up every morning and, and feeling that, you know, that strain, that push on the body. Do yeah. you think it's an addiction or is it just this small overtraining problem? I don't know really. It's tough, quite yeah. tough to say. I mean, for me, I think the reason I was so keen to keep doing it was just because it was... It's, the thing is, especially with university level, like you really are at the top of your game. Like yeah. It's amazing to yeah. see how much you can improve. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just so much It's so much fun to do that. But also, just to, it is, socially, it is actually quite good fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, you don't get to do much with people from outside of Rome, but yeah. it is great fun to go down and have the sessions every week and yeah. train with the same people and compare your scores and sort of like, well, not compare your scores, but sort of have yeah. the banter that goes yeah, with yeah. that, yeah. So, I mean, would you say like there's like quite a, a big internal motivation? You know, there's, um, you know, you want to, you want to know how far you can go. You know, yeah. You want to know how far you can push yourself. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, depending on that, you can compare that to other other roles as well. Yeah. So I think it's it's really interesting because it's a mixture. It's a very ind- independent sport because you push you push yourself as hard as you can to get into a boat. But then as soon as you're in that boat, so you're competing against your your friends to get into a boat. Yeah. But then once you're in that boat, you've got to compete with the people yeah. that are in that boat. So yeah. it's very odd. It's a really strange dynamic. Yeah. Um, and it does flick from being in direct competition with someone to having to work with them. Yeah. And we did a lot of stuff where we'd be doing, we'd be in pairs, so in boats of two, and yeah. um, you'd be you'd be racing with one guy one minute, and then yeah. you'd swap partners, and the next race you'd be racing against them, yeah. and it's all to see who's got the best, yeah. who's the best, and it's quite it's quite interesting seeing how, like, how different people deal with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No. It can be quite tough. Yeah, yeah, really, um, yeah, really tough. Yeah. Um, so, so if we if we if we can say that some individuals may be. Um, more addicted to the exercise. I mean, we can talk not just rowing, we can talk other sports as well, but if yeah. we're focusing on rowing, you know, are there individuals within the club that are addicted to it, are addicted to that lifestyle? Yeah, I think so. I think it's quite, rowing's quite a strange one because it's, um, it's, when you're involved with it, it seems like it's like the be all and end all. Yeah. And then when you stop, you sort of suddenly realise and have this realisation that yeah. there is so much more going on. Yeah. But um, but when you're you're doing it, it's definitely almost like an addiction because you're you're constantly um, in your own world. It's yeah, that, exactly. It's that like, environment. You're yeah. not thinking when you're every when you're in lectures, you're not or when you're you know having dinner or whatever. You're thinking about like yeah. how you can improve. Yeah, yeah. Um, what you've done previous, like yeah. how you can get better, and it's very much like it does. Um, you end up spending a lot of your time thinking about just ways that you can yeah. improve. So it yeah, it takes over your time. Yeah, yeah massively, absolutely yeah. massively. And yeah, yeah, everything you. Do sort of has like a consequence. Yeah, you, yeah. So like you, oh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I mean, would you say that this is greatly influenced from the coach, or is it genuinely because the athletes are this way inclined? Do you think that the coach pushes for this addiction, or do you think that some individuals are just naturally they're that way, they're that kind of? To be honest, I don't think you have much of a choice. I think because it's such an intense sport, yeah. and you have to. If you don't feel that way, then there's no way that you're going to be able to cope with it because yeah. it's just too much. Yeah. training and the dedicate the level of dedication that you have to have just isn't if it's unless it's something that you're really really you really want to do you're yeah. just not going to be able to, to yeah. do it because as soon as you start missing sessions like that's that's it really I mean yeah. it's a downward spiral yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I mean obviously now um, we discussed previously that you know you don't, you don't row anymore yeah um, but I mean when you were, when you're actually doing the rowing then last term and like last year as well wasn't it yeah it's because, last year. yeah yeah um, d- I mean did you actually enjoy that level of exercise did you feel a massive enjoyment from it or was the strain or the, the loss of time elsewhere too big a negative compared to the how much enjoyment you had um i don't know it's a difficult one actually uh i think a lot of it um so 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 basically you know was it was it did the negatives outweigh the positives or were you I, yeah for me the reason i stopped was because it got to a point where i was doing really well and i kind of felt like if I wanted to, I'd already give, like I wasn't doing hugely well my, my degree and something yeah. I was like, well, you know, that's what I'm here at university for at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, I probably yeah. ought to focus on that. Yeah. But, um, but also just because it's just, it constantly steps up yeah. and the step up this year would have been massive. Um, yeah. And I just kind of felt like I, if I struggled last year academically, this yeah, year was going to yeah. be really, really tough. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. Um, well, did you ever feel uh, uncomfortable with this level of exercise? Um or you know, or did you only become really aware of how much you were doing after you stopped? 
So when you were rowing, were you aware of how intense it really was? Or was it because we talk about that environment you're around, that's all yeah. you think about, because you're just so involved with it, did you not really understand how much you were doing? I think you do realise because it's quite... Um, because obviously you can compare it to what... Yeah. You, I mean, when you have time, like when you're over the holidays and stuff, well, yeah. when you did get holidays... Uh, you kind of realise how you do realise how much you're doing obviously all the people that you spend time yeah, with yeah. outside of rowing are all pretty shocked at how often you're training yeah. and stuff like that but um, I think yeah it is super super intense and it can the the whole pain aspect of it can be really really yeah. um, annoying it's, it's really strange because you have mixed sort of feelings so after you've done if you do like a test or like a 2k test or a race or something yeah. the whole thing is just really it's just completely painful the whole way through yeah, yeah. but then suddenly at the end you that's when the enjoyment comes out, realising yeah. that you've done what you have and you finished and you yeah. pulled, like, pulled a time and you're happy yeah. with it. Or... I mean, did you, I mean, did you, you just said there about holidays, um, I mean, did you, did you train in the holidays? Is that yeah, right? like we, we were given training plans for all the holidays, I mean, plus is, we had pre-season yeah. um, training camps. I mean, that is, that's very intense. Yeah, you don't, the thing is, if you, they, they basically, they say if you miss three weeks, then you may as well, like you should, three weeks is the maximum amount of time you can miss without like serious training. Mm. Um, without um, like, so it's almost like a guideline. That's like a, you know, if that's a fixed thing that they have. You know, yeah, they, that's yeah. But they they told when I was I did some I, I had like towards the end of the year I did um like a few trials and things at Cavisham um, yeah with GB and that's what one of the things that they were saying was that it's so easy important. To... Yeah, you just want to keep it like yeah. don't let it, especially over the summer because the summer is like the biggest break you get almost. Yeah, yeah. And they were just like, just no, just make sure you keep going. So otherwise, yeah. if you if you yeah. miss three weeks, then you may as well. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're losing. That's when you start losing your levels. Of fitness, yeah, yeah. So it's not. Yeah. Um, I mean, just finally as well, um, when we talk about exercise addiction and overtraining, um, would you say that the problem of overtraining and, and also exercise addiction, um, would you say that the problem is is a socially aware problem? Would you say it's a, the club is aware of that level of exercise? Are they aware of how addicted or how much training they're actually doing? Um, no, or is it just specific individuals? Would you say it's bigger than just a couple of guys that are addicted, or would you say that everyone's aware of that? Um, I don't know. I think it's difficult. It's a lot of it's um, well, obviously the coaches are what are driving the yeah. the whole training plan. Yeah. Um, and um, but do you believe they're aware that it could be classified as an exercise addiction or overtraining? Do you think they're aware of that? Yeah, I think they're very aware of that, and I think they're quite keen to make sure that it's not. Um, yeah. They were they, a lot of the time. They a lot of the stuff, the training we did was specifically Kate. Like it would be, so some of the things we'd do is we'd do um, these half hour things where we do three half an hour like ergos on yeah. on the ergs um, with ninety second breaks in between, and the whole point of that was to keep your heart rate at a certain yeah. certain rate, to, and the whole point in that was to stop you from overtraining. Yeah. But what, like, but still work on your fitness. It was almost, I, I don't know. It's sort of like a, uh, but yeah, just by, by don't, you're not pushing yourself massively yeah. hard during those sessions, and a lot of it's like that. Like it's just really, really long, drawn out sessions, yeah. which aren't about pushing yourself as hard as you possibly can, because once you've got that level of fitness, it's more just about sort of yeah. improving your, um, your endurance yeah, capabilities, yeah. and that's what we were doing a lot of the time. It's just really, really long sessions. Yeah. And the coaches were really on it and making sure that we didn't push ourselves harder than we were supposed yeah. to. Okay. Just because it, that's when you do get to where, that's when people start overtraining and that's yeah. when you start having bad weeks because yeah, yeah. you you think you're you're pushing yourself really hard but you're suddenly like, why am I doing so bad? Yeah. Like, why can't I perform any yeah, yeah. In, in this environment? It's, that's one of the most frustrating things is when yeah. you, you feel like you put loads of work in it because you're doing, you're training on such an intense schedule. And too much, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you do push yourself too hard, you end up being in a yeah. situation where you do have like weeks where you just can't yeah. perform at all. It's really frustrating. Okay. Well, thanks very much for your time, Matt. That's Thank fine. you. I... Cheers, mate. Cheers. Well,